Let the dragon consume you! One more time, here's your host, Brian and Clay, that about to bring you some sweet, sweet Overwatch action. All right, we are back for episode 11. Yeah. Hey, how are you, Ryan? Hey. We're at it again, man. Yeah. Keeping it going. So we, we hit our 10, 10, 10 episode milestone, and we're just going to keep yeah. keep going until we die. Well, they say once you make it to 11, you're in the big times. Is it? <laughs> who says that? I, I don't know. I don't know who ever said that. <laughs> They're saying it now. People are All right, saying it. Yeah. <laughs> you're coining it now. It's now. Yeah. So we're in week four, stage three. Yeah. How many more weeks do we have? We have uh, next week is our last week. Ah, um, and then the new playoffs. Yeah. We so get no, four teams. Yeah. So no news this week, but we'll go over the new playoffs. I don't think we've talked about it. Um, so essentially, the format is which I think is really cool. Like, yeah. you know, Blizzard Blizzard's good at doing cool things, right? So we get four teams. The highest seeded team, the prize pool is still the same. Two top teams get paid. I think it's 100000 for first, 25000 for second. Yep. Um, the top seeded team in the playoffs gets to choose which of the three teams they want to play um, first. And then they do it normally. So two teams play, one team from each side makes it to the next round, and then they play for the, the final. Yeah, the big bucks, man. That's no cool. Joke. That's right. yeah, I don't that think I've seen sweet. that in any league before. Yeah, and it gives a chance for that fourth place team. Kind of, it kind of sucks being on the edge, right? You're like, man, shit, I did really well this stage. Yeah, didn't make it into the playoffs at top three. Gives another chance to the uh, the fourth team. Yeah, yeah but I think sweet. it's gonna it's gonna be a cool situation where like you know teams that have like if you've if say Los Angeles Valley has been beating the Gladiators all season, right? And Gladiators end up being say the the sec the third team in the tier or in the four, they can be like, we want Gladiators because we know we can beat them. Yeah. And then we'll deal with whatever. And it's a cool incentive, you know, now that they're taking away the incentive of not having to play a game uh, for that first seeded team, now they're giving them another incentive of, okay, choose, you know, choose your choose your victim. Yeah. <laughs> and this, I guess, will still all fall on a Sunday afternoon-ish. Yes. Yeah, so it's nice. going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's a full week of Overwatch there. So, yeah, that oh. will be next week. It's going to be a chunky episode. Oh, it'll be two episodes for us, but we're going to yeah. get them to you guys fast, though. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, let's, ready to get into this? Yeah, what are we, starting Wednesday? Yeah, we're starting with Wednesday. Um, so we're going to do an honorable mentions like our normal format, and then we're going to get into our feature match. Um, and this week we had a special feature for you guys. You know, we thought we thought we would do it. Um, but let's do the honorable mentions, which is the Los Angeles Valiant versus Houston Outlaws. Houston taking it 3-1. Whoop, whoop. Uh, yeah, I was hyped for that one, and then the, this, the second one this week once again made me <laughs> mad. Um, but yep. we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, the next honorable mention is Dallas Fuel versus Florida Mayhem. Florida taking it 3 1. Um, Dallas Fuel's a mess. Right? Yeah. Like, I, Shanghai looks better than Dallas Fuel right now. And I was going to mention yeah. that I think Shanghai's best best opportunity for their first win is probably either Dallas Fuel or Florida Mayhem at this point. Yeah. And I don't think they get to play them this stage. Uh, but they definitely because they already did earlier in the stage. Mm-hmm. But they will. They definitely battle it out next. Yeah, it's Shanghai. coming. They're getting close. Taking it down, we, baby. Yeah, yeah. We see. We see later in the week that they're getting. They're getting real close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to getting that win. Yeah. All right, and we're gonna hop into our honorable mentions. Speak of the devil, or speak of the dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Shanghai Dragons versus Boston Uprising. Um, this was an interesting game. I mean, naturally, Boston is on a tear. They're undefeated at the moment, right? Yep. And. That's that's well earned. Mistakes. I was I was texting Clay earlier this week and I was just like, wait, was mistakes on the bench this whole time? Because I honestly thought they brought him in at some stage. Um, but yeah, the fact that he was riding the bench, it, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah a- any team could have used this guy at any point, and it makes me wonder what other players are out there that are in that same boat. Where you know teams that are struggling in certain positions, shoot my team when the outlaws were struggling. Was there a guy out there that we could just picked up that's just currently sitting and hanging out on a bench, yeah. right? But it's kind of crazy because <laughs> Philadelphia was kind of in that situation for a while there until they picked up 
uh, EQO kind of halfway through, or put him in halfway through. They had Shadow Shadowburn and EQO kind of just each one riding the bench in different matches, which is kind of crazy. They're both great Genjis. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, so we'll get we'll get into it. So we start off with Volskai Industries, and this one was kind of you know what you expected. Um, one big theme that we've known about Shanghai Dragons is ever since the mix up of the team, they're now a half Korean team and they're a half Chinese. Yeah. Um, right down the middle. What do you think the primary language is? Do you think it's probably Korean? I would say English. You think so? Because uh, I know uh, a lot of Chinese culture, a lot of uh, – they, they tend to pick up Korean pretty early on too. Mm. I don't know if it's vice versa though with the Korean and the Chinese. Yeah, you may be but, right. And, you know, I have heard in the past that certain call-outs in Korean are easier yeah, um, okay. than English. Yeah, right. So. Yeah, I, I don't know if they meet in the middle or if they are currently, you know, using Korean. But I mean, one thing we mentioned find before, out. yeah, one thing we mentioned before is that Kaguri is trying to learn both. Yeah, um, and her being kind of now the star player of that team and kind of the face of that team, uh, they might do a thing like with a uh, Bishu, right, where they use him as a translator or use her as a translator. Yeah, uh, between the two or that middle point communication, which we've seen other teams use successfully. So um, I don't know, but. At the moment, their communication does struggle. And yeah. what this kind of leads to, which we see on Volsky, is that, you know, they're, they're at, the longer fights go is where you see the communication break down and they start to make missteps, right? Yep, yep. Um, I don't know if that's pure play-based, play but I think it does have a lot to do with communication because they start fights off a lot better than they used to. It's more coordinated um, than the past, but then if it drags out in those you know, those fight styles that, like, for instance, Los Angeles Gladiators like to fight, those brawly matches, uh, they definitely usually fall fall behind on that. Um, right. Definitely. And he, communi- oh, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. No, no. Yeah, yeah, communication is, is key, as we always say. But what did you have to say? I was going to say, it, yeah, two things. It's definitely communication and then confidence. Because, dude, a lot of these guys, like you said, Gaguri, uh, Dia, a lot of talented players on the team. But, man, the confidence – that's one of the biggest things about Overwatch, man. If yeah. you're not confident going into these fights that you can pick up the kills and stuff like that, dude, it'll hurt you because we see later on in this series where, I mean, I hate to say it, they're down and out, but they have nothing to lose at this point. Yeah. So they're like, dude, we just go at it. We're just going to battle. And uh, they looked pretty dominant. Yeah. Yeah, they did. They did look, look really good. So, I mean, only thing here is mistake. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a comment about mistakes is that I think he's – one of the, when it comes to getting warmed up, like stretching, you know, in normal sports, stretching, shooting yeah. a couple free throws, he's probably one of the fastest players I've seen warm up. Like he, when he gets hot, it's immediately immediate and he holds it throughout. Yeah. And that's weird. I mean, that's, that's not weird in a bad way, but it's definitely different because you see a lot of players that take a minute to kind of get going. Even EQO, when he started, you know, when he came fresh on, had that warm up period and you noticed it or when he yeah. swapped out with Snilio for a bit you could see well Snilio is another one of those people who are just ready to go all the time yeah, yeah mistakes it's an anomaly how good this guy is especially in my eyes for the I'll say it again for the situation he came in under for the expectations he came in under on a team that was doing well uh to push that team to be in an undefeated position is like yeah. a big like all eyes on him he will, he will no longer have to fight for a position in this league Yeah, absolutely. as long as he keeps this up. Yeah, no joke. And all the characters he can play, too. It's not like yeah. he's hopping on one character. He's you know out of the bat with that one guy, dude. He's playing Sombra. He's playing uh, Genji, playing Widowmaker. Yeah. He's yeah. A killer. But on this map specifically, he's one of the main reasons um, dragons have a lot of trouble. Uh, like on point two defense, he mainly dragon blades is how he stops points. Um, yeah. He uses them very effectively. Make sure he takes out the supports. Uh, and it, throughout this match, you know, Kaguri's really carrying the load. She's very consistent. Um, I, I, I meant I, I think about Cool Matt when I think about her playstyle, where Cool Matt is very uh, more defensive based, where he usually tries to protect those. He protects Rockus and Bonnie a lot, and then what he'll do is once those like once they try to engage on the supports, they fail that engagement. He then swaps to help finish off kills. Um, yep. So he, he's defense first. Uh, and his tracking is really solid uh, on Diva, and this mimics what Gagiri's play style is like. Um, do you think is that, is that seem reasonable? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think the only thing that they had a problem with was just the communication on when and where to dive. Uh, the the skill is actually there. I mean, all the players are, like I said, very good. It's just, man, sometimes you catch some of their players. A lot of times you uh, free feel, I guess is how you pronounce it. It's their Zenyatta player, basically. Ah, uh, yes, mainly yes. their support player. You catch him in these odd spots, and it looks like he's – uh, either trying to push early or he's way behind the team. I think that's like their biggest thing when it comes down to it, communication. Yeah, and and that's that's one of their drawbacks right now is they have one of the more weaker um, support duos um, that we yeah. get into because that affects them in New Bonnie the next match. But here, Guguri's consistent. She has literally half the team blows throughout this match, um, but they're unable to get that second cap. And then uh, Boston on attack, whenever you have to get one tick, man, it just – it's. It's real easy. <laughs> it puts in your favor, and um, the commentators made a good point that teams now are now that Volskaya has been in the rotation for this whole stage, right? Teams are now more accustomed to it, yep. and that point A has become a lot easier, um, especially for those widow battles. It's kind of it's kind of a thing where most people are going to get point A. I haven't seen a full defense on it yet. Yeah, it's in a, a long time. Yeah, it's definitely um, very yeah. offensive heavy, like where the offense has a lot of. A lot of perks going into yeah. it. They're it's really close. Because, it's not a long walk back. Yeah, yeah. And China does a great job. The first, like, two or three pushes Boston has, you see them dive. They're getting in mistakes face. But as soon as Boston gets one pick on China, China almost looks like they're, you know, they're scattered. They have yeah. no idea what's going on. It's kind of crazy that one pick does that to a team because they all just separate. They have no idea what to do at that point. So Yeah, yeah that, that communication is key. I'm, I'm interested in hear their comms. I don't think they've shown yep. their comms yet. No. Um, or I don't watch so, enough yeah. Shanghai games to see them, which is yeah, probably that my could fault. Be too. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it, Boston takes it. We're moving to New Bonnie. And New Bonnie is kind of, you know, it's less oppressive than the previous map. Um, but the the issue here is a little bit different is where we get to focus on that duo problem. So on competitive overwatch uh, subreddit, they've you know people post essentially the stats per character, right? And one was healing like Zenyatta and support mains. And it showed both of Shanghai's uh, supports at the bottom of that list as far as performance. And you kind of see that mimic in the result, right? So here it's it's a case where there's too much. So we talk about Gagiri's play style and how she likes to play defensive. Well, the problem is that there's too much focus on protecting Sky and Free Feel here um, on New Bonnie, and that causes issues because they can't focus on picking people off. Yeah. So, you know, when you have to protect your supports more and you're more of a defensive diva, you're not spending as much time on the offensive side of it and being that aggressive um, initiator as well and following up with Winston, right? Yep, absolutely. Uh, we get to see Mistakes play Soldier here on defense. We do. Which I don't. I mean, we know his pool is huge, which just goes back to why was he on the bench. Yeah. Um, but I've never seen him play soldier. Uh, yeah. Until this point, and it's yeah. solid. It's pretty yeah. solid soldier. It's like definitely this. solid. And I was I was gonna say the uh, Chinese definitely had some solid plays. Definitely at the very beginning, where Ada was able to pick up these kills. Uh, it's just man, slow out of the gates coming into like the first fights. Man, once they get like tuned and warmed up a little bit. It looks like they're a little bit more in control, but it's yeah. like, man, they have to work for these strategies that a lot of these teams have already gotten down. Where you see Boston has already got these kind of dives down. Um, they, you know, they execute them, but it just takes them a long time to figure out where to go. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely um, see that. Um, but here again, Gaguri, I mean, you're, you'll hear her name a lot. She's pretty much became the face of this team, uh, the mm -hmm. center of this team, and the fan base loves her. Uh, her performance consistent. We talked about, you know, she uses a higher sensitivity, and she's great at eating bombs. Uh, she eats damn near every tracer bomb that comes her way. Yeah, uh, and it's very impressive, uh, which, which helps, you know. Yeah, there was a cool spot um, that I want to mention when Boston's on offense, where uh, they've got it through the streets. Um, they they've been wiped by China. This is the first time China's wiped them because Boston's been able to just jam through the first part of this map. And Boston just takes this moment to just stop. And it looks like they're all listening to somebody talk. And then once they're done, they all start moving as one unit. And, dude, once they start going, they never stop. They, yeah. they full wipe China. It never stops after that. It's, those moments of clarity yeah. and everybody listening and focusing on one thing, man, it was beautiful to see because it looked like it was almost in slow motion. It's like play how, calling. How, 
Yeah, it was insane um, to see, man, how cool it was. Yeah, and you see that in uh, – you see that in basketball. When, yeah, you know, I was going to say, that's yeah, what it felt like. They're yeah. approaching, and the point guard is essentially calling um, the setup. And then they move from that point, and then it gets this flow going. Yeah. Um, especially if you watch yeah. Cavaliers, because LeBron runs that team. So you kind of see it play out easier there as far as how yeah. people move around the court. Yeah, the speed of the game slows down to almost a halt. Mm-hmm. And uh, once it gets going, dude, it was crazy to see it happen because, dude, I had never seen anything like that. And you see people, you know, slow down after a wipe or something like this. But this yeah. was like in the middle of a push. They're going up that hill, you know, in Abani where you're on point, going to point three. Mm-hmm. Um, they slow it down. Dude, it was cool. It was cool yeah. to see. Yeah, it was cool to see. Um, and the only thing that stood out here is just Neko actually playing. You know, Neko's always been solid. He's always been w- w- middle of the pack, uh, Zenyatta's. Yep. Uh, but here he's able to shut down two Genji blades. Like Otto pit pops oh, blade yeah, and immediately <laughs> Neko headshots him. Yeah, he does, man. It's mul- yeah, it's multiple, right? Yeah, it's he, two. It's two. Yeah, dude. Because that's think important. They on they're, how, yeah, they're two. They're two big is. blades because Otto's not. He's not really hot yet. And he's not in the zone. And he's not building them as fast as he should be. Yeah. So getting one uh, or getting two of them is a big yeah. deal when he's probably only had like three. Yeah, Neko, not one of those uh, Zenyatas that comes to mind where you're like, oh, this guy's a big playmaker as far as kills. Yeah. Uh, definitely very solid, but he's not the Jonak or anything like that. So seeing two uh, disrupting volleys, man, pretty cool. Yeah. So Boston takes that one again. Uh, not surprised yep. that's their two. They need one more kind of close it out. So we get into what we're going to start calling our map of the match. So for, you know, this format is obviously meant to for people who don't have the time to watch every game. We kind of try to give you guys a little bit. So what we're doing is now we're going to take a map out of each of our feature matches and say, hey, if you can only watch one, watch this one, right? Yeah. Because um, Blizzard's doing a great job on Twitch as far as breaking the games out into their own kind of uh, streamable videos per match and stuff like that. So hopefully it helps. But this one is our map of the match. Um, control map, Nepal. Uh, control in general, Boston does a great job on, um, which is, you know, not in Shanghai's favor here. Uh, but here we get to actually go all three rounds, which was interesting. Um, but the the theme here is that, you know, mistakes and striker as a combo outpace Dia and Otto. Even though Dia and Otto are finally, are finally getting into it and getting coordinated, as you'd say, um, yeah. from the communication, stamp, communication standpoint, there's not much they can do because strikers still, like, mistakes is doing really well and strikers right behind them doing as well as striker always does. Yeah. Um, he was killing it, man. Yeah, so round one, Lighthouse, the only thing that stands out is, you know, Kagiri had an important 3K bomb, which yep. gave him that gave him that one win to keep him or get them to the third round uh, because they had it 99%. It was well-placed, put them in a position where they had to get off point, and they were able to hold it um, yeah, to move it, into round two. It was actually in the face of an EMP that was uh, probably yes. going to be pretty devastating, too, because once you hit a full EMP, especially on Lighthouse, everybody's yeah. kind of clumped out. Uh, really well-timed, really well-placed where it – even with an EMP, they were able to win the fight. It was cool. Yeah, which is good. Like, that's that's one thing that for for Gary is really impressive is her reaction speed is nuts. Like, yeah, yeah, she usually can can assess situations and adjust uh, really quick, uh, which is cool to see. It's cool to yeah. see, man. I, I like watching her have, play. Yeah, it's one thing to have good aim and and good placement, but it's also another thing to have these big plays yeah. uh, when other people are making big plays. It's cool. And in general, I think. I think they have. I think Shanghai fixed the first problem where they have the right people up there. Yeah. I think they have the right people, and now if they can fix communication issue, I think that the the skill levels there, um, especially for Overwatch League, I mean they, they belong there. Um, it's just I think that communication piece is is the last piece. Um, yep. Do we know anything about their new coach yet, or? Uh, we do not. I don't know anything about him now. Okay. But yeah, so round two, nothing special really happens. Uh, you do have it's kind of a dominant display. Uh, Boston takes it, and then we move into round three on Ruins where you have mistakes on Widow, and he's just, he doesn't, I never see him go cold. Like, that, it's, it's so yeah. weird because, yeah, we're just now seeing him in this stage, but it's been four weeks, man, and the guy yeah. just shows up. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, not only just him sitting in the back, it's kind of the implication that he's sitting in the back yeah. getting these picks, but note and striker. Uh, take advantage of that because you can tell that China's kind of playing around this play style of well we got to stay out of the the way of this widow yeah. so note and striker are picking off these guys that are hiding behind pillars uh, kind of because you have to kind of separate you're not a yeah. big ball when you're fighting like that uh, and note and striker just take advantage of it man they impl- you know like I said the implication of mistake being there and getting picks and he gets picks but uh, it's those two I think that you know hold down the fort yeah and. Uh, 
yeah, especially going against Dia, right? Like mistakes has been he's given like sure four problems. He's given everybody he's given all the best yeah. widows problems. So oh, Dia not being on that on that par, I would say, performance wise. Yeah, it almost makes happening. me uh and we've talked about this before, it almost makes me uh, do you want to change the composition? Maybe you don't try to win the widow battle because if there is a dominant widow, uh, they generally take over the game. Maybe yeah. you just I don't know. Runes is just such a weird map where you almost have to run a widow. Yeah. So and, and you know we see this. I'm starting to see this a lot at my point in the ladder. You know, is that at that low level, if somebody can play a widow, it's a very big advantage uh, because yeah. dive is very hard to coordinate at that at at the platinum diamond level. And usually their widow, the widow battles either go, they swing one way. There's not usually even out. Um, so it's just a case where you have to pin them down. And <laughs> the funny thing is what I end up doing is just playing Lucio and then just spamming that area to try to keep them suppressed, right? Oh, yeah. And it's so hard to kill Lucio, too, on Widow. Man. Exactly. The, right? the generation. Unless you're getting headshots, man. It's crazy. It's hard. Yeah. And then the speed boost and stuff like that. So that's kind of yeah. my play towards it. But I think in the next round when we get the new patch, it's going to be crazy, right? Um... I think things are going to change enough to where the option will be there for other solutions for Widow. Yeah. Um, one thing we'll see later is how Gesture deals with Widows, where your Winston, if your Winston's good enough, the Widow doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good they are. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the coordinations and stuff like that. But uh, Boston take this map again, um, basically on the back of mistakes, and then we move into Route 66, where, you know, finally Shanghai gets one, uh, where it seems like they actually are warm. They look really good here. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they kind of if Boston took the foot off the pedal, but Dia's widows finally he's he's performing very well. And one thing I notice is that I, I think that if his widow is at the level on Route sixty six consistently, that will put him in a better position because they need him to perform well um, for everything else to kind of round out. Like Guri is going to constantly perform well. Uh, their supports. I I don't know if it's the case where Sky and Freefield don't get the protection they need to perform at a higher level um but I, maybe that's the case of if you have that you need the damage going out so that your healers have some space right yeah, yeah. it was awesome to see the combo of him on widow and Edo on on genji dude they were applying a ton of pressure pressure that we hadn't yeah. seen the dragons uh, apply especially in this series oh, yeah. um, where it looked like they were the dominant team especially going into point two and three uh and they re- i mean they held it on point uh going into boston's offense uh, they were doing this cool thing, the Dragons were, that yeah. they were cycling their support alts to dive Boston. And I love this proactive uh, support alts when, you know, a lot of people use them reactively. Hey, this guy's, you know, blading. Let's yeah. use our, our Zenyatta alt. The Dragons are using uh, the, the Trans and uh, Valkyrie to be proactive, yeah. where they're jumping on Boston using these alts, and they're getting them wiped on them. And I think Boston is down to, like, 30 seconds left until they have to finally get it to point three. Uh, it was cool to see. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a different different take. And, you know, like I said, it, it, I'm happy I finally sat down and watched the Shanghai Dragons game because I'm not as cynical as I was on the whole thing um, as far as their performance. And it's not as doom and gloom as I thought. It's just a case of, you know, a, a, a league needs a, a worse team, right? But – they're putting themselves in a position where they can give 110. percent It's not, oops, excuse me. It's not pure organization based because yeah. they're working towards um, fixing the problem. So, yeah. yeah, I get why people like them. They look like even when they lose, they look like they're composed. Doesn't look like there's a lot of you yeah. know heads down or or uh, arguments or anything like that. I don't know any of the off the field things, but yeah, uh, yeah I, I kind of want them to win now too. Yeah, I'm emotionally the they looked a lot better. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, especially compared to the earlier parts of the season where they looked like, dude, on the verge of tears watching yeah. some of these games. They look like they're fun. I mean, this is just a building experience. You're going to lose games when you're yeah. uh, not as, as experienced as a team, especially it's gonna, together. It's, it's going to be crazy when we, you know, get more teams added to the roster, or the overall yeah. roster, and see yeah. do those teams come in hot or do they come in in the Shanghai Dragon situation? Do you use that as kind of a guideline? Um, to, okay, we've seen these teams go through these trials and tribulations. We saw what Los Angeles Valley went through. We've seen what Gladiators went through, what Dragons went through, what Dallas Fuel's currently going through. Yeah. And, you know, using that as a template for building a team and putting yourself in the right position. Um, yeah, I think I think, I think think it's definitely educational. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, they'll they'll turn it around and then we'll just have a better league. I mean, we already have a bunch of three twos even this week. Um, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Boston taking it three one. All right, that brings us into Thursday, where I see. Uh, I wanted to wait till later to tell you this, Ryan, but I'm I'm back on that train. What? I'm what train? back on that Los Angeles. Train. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good week for us, Ryan. It was a great week for us. Uh, yeah, so we get to battle it out against London, yeah. taking it three two. I, I wish feel, I would have watched this one. I'm going to go back tonight. And I watch feel it. like you're saying you're a bandwagon guy, but I think you've been. You've kind yeah. of been with Los Angeles Gladiators yeah. since they made that turnaround, and now I think you're it's yeah, in your full heart. on. Yep. So yep. we'll see. Just gotta, get, just gotta get that jersey ordered, man. <laughs> That's how you that. know you care. I still haven't yeah. ordered my jersey yet, but yeah, still with yeah, these outlaws, man. That goose on my back, man. I got the to goose. Yeah, yeah. So the Glads take it three two, um, and then we see the Shock battle it out against New York, and New York pretty dominant three one. Yeah, shock struggle this um, week, man. Yeah, and then our feature match. This is the battle of whose defense is better, right? Like, yeah. Every one of these maps was just so defensive. It seemed yeah. like, dude, it was crazy. Or whose offense is worse. I guess, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all for perspective. Sure. <laughs> Damn, that was dark. That was, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Both, you, both these teams don't know how to attack. Yeah, they're struggling, man. Yeah, so yeah, so we get Seoul mm-hmm. Dynasty versus Philadelphia Fusion, and we start out at Temple of Anubis, one of my favorite maps. <laughs> As you said in the past. Yeah, just one of my personal favorites. Man, sometimes trash. They just should redesign yeah. it. Sometimes you get the C point too. Sometimes. Sometimes. But yeah, so um Most most Sol- difficult wait, most difficult point two in the game? Um yeah. Yeah, I that Volskaya I put it up there. Yeah. Um, I think Nubani point one is pretty difficult. Um, not a two CP map, but um, yeah, I think this is point two because it's so long. Yeah. Um, really, only one way to get in. They might and as well just spawn them from the middle of the point. Yeah, just out the you ground. Might like be able to make it. I actually wrote down here <laughs> that this is probably one of the worst maps for Winston to try to dive into um, because of Junkrat and stuff yeah. like that. Because you have to leap over everything, mm-hmm. and you've been shot. A hundred times by the time you get there. <laughs> all you're the already legends. dead. You might as well just try to alt the only way you're getting in. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so we see Soul started off. Um, man, kind of, sh- you know, just struggle. Uh, they do get point one. Mm-hmm. They, Wiki does get a blade. And it's weird. We see Wiki starting over Fleta, which is kind of unusual. But I, they bring it up a couple times that Wiki is a, a better Junkrat player than Fleta, that he... Obviously, later on, is able to hold the point for a long time. Um, wait, does Fleta didn't play this one, right? It's no, he did not. Wiki yeah, and that Munchkin was, yeah. starting it up. Yeah, yeah. Which um, I mean, it worked. It did. It um, did work. Yeah. But it was the beginning portion was like, okay, wait a minute, uh, and yeah. that's what they, like you said, they they bring Wiki in for defense. Um, I don't know. I just think Fleta is like a carpe situation. He should always be in the damn game. He's yeah, too, dude, he's, he's too a hell good. of a player. And um, he's just got a well-rounded base of heroes, too, to yeah. play on. And his Widow's so nuts that, especially on this map, where, yeah, you don't have that Junkrat ability if you don't use Wakid, but you have the Widow, and his Widow's nasty. And I think he wins yeah. the duel every yeah. time against Carpe. Well, okay, I'm being ridiculous. He wins. I think he wins the duel on Anubis versus Carpe, though, Yeah, if they have yeah, to go that sure. route. But anyways. Yeah, so Soul does take one. Um, never make it into two, or never get any ticks on two. And then Philly try to take one. Never take one. Um, <laughs> EQO does get a blade eventually. Uh, gets a couple people with it actually, um, but Miro does this cool little thing where he's he's around the point, so he sneaks on, which is kind of hard. Like this dude's a big son of a yeah. bitch. It's a, it's a Winston, <laughs> but he sneaks on the point, hops off, sneaks on the point. Um, along with Munchkin, most of his team's already dead, so he's yes. just waiting for them to come back. Uh, him and Munchkin just hold the point, kind of yeah. by themselves for a long time. And, uh, yeah, we see a full hold from Seoul, which, you know, they're kind of notorious for, right? They're yeah. a pretty defensive team, so or bad uh, and, offensive and, team. Yeah, and there's there's also the case where uh, Toby and Ryu, so Ryu's back. Yeah. And they've talked about, like, what happened with Ryu Jae-hong, which I'm happy they referenced. What happened? Essentially, he's been taking kind of breaks here and there uh-huh. um, for health reasons as far as just mental health. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, as well as just being tired because, you know, he's 28. He's on his deathbed. So it's pretty Damn much it. Or that 26. Makes me feel way worse about He's 26. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to treat those old players like, you know, senior citizens. Yeah. But I'm, I'm joking. But yeah, he's just he's just trying to, 
you know, a lot of pressure, obviously being one of the faces of Overwatch yeah. um, in general and the support role. And he's just kind of taking a break in the time when I don't know if he should be taking a break because Soul's not or Soul's not been playing that hot on yeah. offense. Uh, but anyways, uh, him and Toby are great at staying alive and supporting each other. They're yeah, like they're real good together. And they've played yeah. together for a while, right? So I sense. wish we got to see more Anna because Reed Young's Anna's insane. Um, yes. that might be it. He's like, hey. I'm taking a break. You bring this. You bring the old lady back in. You get the old man back in. <laughs> we'll so. see. They need to do something. Anna's in a weird place where she's not. She's not bad. It's just that she's not. She can't do her thing as an yeah. Anna player. It is. Yeah. She can't do her thing. It's hard. It's very hard. Yep. But right. uh, yeah. So soul full hold the first point. Win this map. We go into Blizzard World. Just another great map. Just, <laughs> two great maps to start this one off. Um, Don't worry. Uh, stage is almost over. Yeah, so I guess we start with Soul on offense. Philly full holds them. Um, Carpe and Fraggy actually look like a pretty good dive comp there yeah. for like I, I mean, obviously you know Philly great uh, brawling team, but we I'd never seen Fraggy. You know, Fraggy does this thing where he dives in and dies a lot of the it's time. It's called doing a Fraggy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty it's literally notorious. a thing. Which is crazy. He does this quite a few times on his defense, but Carpe is with him there yeah. to pick up the kill. And so if Fraggy dies, whatever, it's Blizzard World, you spawn at the same distance, he's back before it matters. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's pretty cool to see that go off. Um, yeah, and then we get into Soul's, uh, Soul's defense, which is pretty much the same. It, I mean, it's just, dude, it's grindy. Yeah. It's long. They barely get it. I think they get it in the last thirty seconds, just because Carpe gets a big sticky on uh, yeah. on Toby at one yeah. point. Yeah. So, and that's it's one of those cases where you 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 know I put here one thing the commentators kept bringing up is that Soul has is poor at focus targeting, right? Like they don't they are all good individually, but they split every fight into one v ones, and then if they lose that, then the whole thing just drops out. Yeah. Crumbles. And yeah, that's not the way you're supposed to play. And we, we talk about, you know, Shanghai having the communication issue where Seoul doesn't have that issue. So they should be able to be calling out who to go after and so on and so forth. So everybody's not fragging on a different target. Yeah. Um, it seems like a lack of um, leadership almost there. Yeah. And that, that used to be, I think mean, Hong used to be kind of that that glue, right? That told everybody what to do, kind of kid right guided. Um, and then we see sometimes Miro... Um, actually calling the shot. So I don't know. I don't know what their their structure looks like. I don't know if it's changed. They're not very visible, or they're not very um, transparent about their processes. But yeah, as you said, they only need one tick for uh, fusion. And whenever yeah. you need one tick, it's pretty much easy. I mean, it's yeah. it's cake well, soul, communicating. Soul definitely made them fight for it for sure. Oh yeah, crazy. Last yeah, thirty their, seconds. Their defense is still good. Uh, their defense yeah. is still at that level that we know from stage one, but their offense has just been declining slowly. Yeah, yeah. So that brings us into Nepal. Mm -hmm. um, the inside map is called Shrine, I think. Right no, on it's Nepal. Sanctum. Sanctum. Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. <laughs> uh, and we had pointed this out in the past. We don't see a lot of EQO on Widow, but he pulls out the Widow. Does yeah. pretty good job. Yeah. yeah, really good job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's it's crazy because Miro generally one of the the Winstons we go to as being one of the you know the better surviving uh, can kind of outlast a lot of other tanks. Yeah, he tries to push in. Just dude, he's just crushed every time he comes in. Yeah, uh, it's kind of bad to watch, man. It was it was crazy. Um, but Fleta is on the Genji, never gets his blade on mm -hmm. map one. Um, yeah, kind of rough to watch. Um, yeah, and, and it's one of those cases where it's. We know fusion is better on control maps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Soul struggles on control maps. So here's where the stats work in your favor, right? I kind of expected Philadelphia to go in um, to it doing pretty well, especially EQO doing good on Sanctum, because Sanctum is one of those weird maps that's indoors, but it is a Widow map. I, d I don't get how it works. I guess the sight lines line up. I guess it's so long. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's kind of weird point. because if you're ever hopped on, you, there's not really getting away, right? It's just yeah. the fact that it's long. Yeah. And that's and that's usually what Philadelphia does with the with the Nepal uh, map set is they're able to have EQO play that um, Widow or on Genji and they do a great job on Sanctum and then on Shrine they follow up with using their double assassination comp right or assassin comp 
yeah. um, which they also play really well with Carpe on Tracer and EQO on Genji, and they're able to press that way. And it's such a different, it's such a different approach or a different feel that when they're able to pull those back to back, um, they're able to close out rounds really quickly. And then you know you have your two O, and there you go, wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah, that one felt, that map two felt a lot closer. Uh, it was a lot more back and forth where map one, you're like, dude, I don't think, I don't think Soul actually touches the the point on map one. <laughs> but yeah, so going into map four, Route 66. Um, yeah, let's see what I got here. So Snailo comes in. Hey, um, yeah, for EQ. Yeah, yeah. And then we get a Soul offense that actually looked offensive. Not offensive. <laughs> Offensive is the wrong word. Uh, they no, look very I, aggressive yeah. uh, is what I'm looking for. Okay, yeah. Because they get into point two with five minutes left, which is kind of crazy because you should usually go into point two, Route 66, you got three or four minutes left. Mm-hmm. Um, got a lot of minutes on the time bank, but they never move it anywhere, you know, anywhere further than that halfway point on point two. Yeah. So, it's that um, defense, man. Their defense yeah. is still strong. As long as that – it's that weird thing is like, uh, what is it What is it in football? Uh the best offense is a good defense kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what's keeping them afloat right now because if their defense was struggling as much as their offense was struggling, they would be they would be at the bottom with Dallas Fuel. Yeah. Um, because other teams are not playing that anymore. Everybody's kind of stepped it up. So it's about that. They, they need to pick that up or figure out. I don't even know if they notice because it doesn't. It hasn't gotten better No. over no. the last couple of weeks. So hopefully, I don't know, something, you know, a light bulb goes off or something like that. Uh, yeah. But, I will say the yeah. the Philly defense with Fraggy and Snilo, they were doing a great job, just uh, doing kind of the same thing that Carpe and Fraggy were doing. Yeah, they were diving really well together, getting the picks really early on in the fights, and I think that had a big difference. You know? Yeah, which one do you like better? Do you like do you like Fraggy with Carpe or with Snilio? Ah, man, I want to say I like Snilio better with Fraggy, mm-hmm. um, but uh, Oasis Snilio Snilo Snilio uh, kind of underperformed. So I don't know. Um, Carpe is just notoriously. Just this great all-around player, especially on the tracer. Yeah. But um, on this map, especially Fraggy and Celia were coordinating so well that it looked like Soul couldn't even get out of that little yeah. cave. I can't so. wait for the All-Star match, man. That's going to be hype. Uh, that will be sweet. Are you already jotting down your team, like who you're going to vote for? Yeah, yeah. I get. It. So are they going to let us vote for them? Yeah, I think that's the plan: is to let the fans vote um, yeah. and then build the teams based off of that. So we'll yeah, see. Get, can I put Jake? As all six members of the team, <laughs> it's a beautiful. Not beautiful after that performance at the end of this week. We'll get into what I he know, does. I, know. I yeah. don't know if he lost his damn mind or what happened, but you, you know what? We'll Maybe he's out. playing it for the crowd. PR stunt. That's what they were spamming in the the chat. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Well, Philly has all the opportunity in the world to kind of finish this one out, and um, they don't get past point one. They yeah. play so passive. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's weird. It's super quiet. It was really weird. It it. You can't really tell what's going wrong, except for they're never leaving the cart to go get Fleta. Mm-hmm. And Fleta is just popping off this whole time on Widow. Just getting all kinds of kills. They're like, nah, we're going to just stay on the cart and just get killed over and over. <laughs> so, That's weird. Yeah. Cart heals. Not, just not enough. No, not enough of those headshots, <laughs> man. So, yeah, Philly never gets it to point two. Uh, Soul, you know, doing what they do best and just holding the point. So, that brings us to a map five. Our map of the match. Yeah. Um... Fleta plays every hero. <laughs> kind of crazy. Pick but not like a, not in like a Shaz way. This is different. No, no, no. no. <laughs> a little bit more direct. You know, he picks DPS heroes. Shaz picks whatever the hell he Shaz wants to play that day. Shaz, we don't need a fourth tank. Yeah, I think that kind of messed up Philly, right? It, it looked like Philly could never adapt. Yeah. Um, uh, that and like I had mentioned earlier, Fraggy Goat, you know, dies twelve times. Neil goes <laughs> two and seven. Yeah, rough, Fraggy man. on Fraggy Town. So there's a they play University, and he just yeah. struggles. Like I think every shatter he lands, he lands right before he dies. Yeah, um, yeah, like a last minute desperation. Yeah, thing. and he's not. He's missed. He missed all most of all, most of his charges. It just was sloppy. Does. Philly go to five more than any other team. They look beat up. They yeah, look they rough. don't have they don't suck. Like besides Snilio, they don't really have a be- I mean, they have a bench. They have a ton of people still on the fucking roster. I mean, yeah. excuse my French. They have, you know, Shatterburn's still there, Dayfly's still there, um, Hot Buzz still there, Sato's still there. Like they have people, Joe Meister. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't use them. Um yeah. and well, you- I, they always look tired when they leave. 
I was gonna say, if you look at them, Matt, or you know, especially Matt Five, they're sweaty. Yeah. They're, like, yeah, they're tired. Oh man, it's crazy. I can only imagine. Especially that. Fraggy, man. He looks like somebody <laughs> beat him up every time. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, and uh, Munchkin pops off. He uh, he kills it on Tracer in this, uh, especially oh, yeah. this three map set. Um, but yeah, Soul Soul take the the fifth you, map. You know what's funny here is like so we get to see EQ on McCree, which that's that's a problem. Uh, I don't like that yeah. much. Um, but it was like it was like Widow a couple weeks ago when we saw him go to that. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, connection. which is and better, is our, now, right? This is our map of the match too. So yeah. but but remember, so even though he did well on Widow for Nepal, he only swapped because he was tanking it on Genji. Like he was just <laughs> not doing well at yeah. all this map. Yeah. So he was trying to stay off the Genji. But here on Oasis he switches to McCree and then Fletter switches to McCree and does better. Oh, that feels bad, man. Yeah. When your counterpart is doing better than you. Man. Uh, McCree oh, by fight. the way, so Fletter did twenty nine percent of his team's damage on all the Oasis maps. And they played yeah. all three rounds and he had over fifteen thousand damage done. That's uh, insane. Yeah, don't ever take that guy out. Yeah. I mean, because I, I I don't think Munchkin's good, Wikid's good, but I don't like them as a duo, yep. right? And I think cool. that's the point of contention. It's almost like Carpe, like Carpe and Snilio, cool. Carpe and Ikio, cool. Ikio and Snilio, like one time they did it, no, doesn't yeah. work because <laughs> they used them for I think a double assassin attempt. It did yep. not work out, and they never did it again. So hopefully they learned their lesson. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't take don't Carpe do out. Jeez. Yeah. All right, Fleta, the Fleta, the Fleta fan base. You know those women screaming for a reason. They know what's up. He's the truth. <laughs> I'm screaming at home when he gets on. Like I get it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, that brings us into our Friday matches where we see Dallas and Boston. Uh, well, they don't really battle it out. Really, <laughs> it's more of a mugging in a, in a tight. Do they even go out there? I didn't watch alleyway. this one, or did they decide pre? game that Boston was just going to win for <laughs> that team is uh, a, that, t- that team's depressing to watch yeah they're rough man but yeah Boston take it 4-0 and then we get to see Los Angeles and Florida play Los Angeles Valiant and the Mayhem where Los Angeles takes it 3-1 they're on a tear man. they are on a tear yeah um, and then we get to see the other Los Angeles team <laughs> the Gladiators play uh, the Houston Outlaws Oh man, we're gonna have two. We're gonna have two Los Angeles teams in the top four. That's gonna be crazy. It's easy to be a Los Angeles fan sometimes. <laughs> That's that warm weather, man. They're like, "What? Uh, who are you a fan of? Uh, Los Angeles?" And then you're like, "Oh yeah, which one?" And he's like, "I don't know. Which one's winning this week?" <laughs> so, which is crazy because like you have the top four, and then you have the next eight or the next four players are all four four right now. Yeah. So any like next next week is important, right? Yeah, very important. Um, I th- though I did went ahead and look ahead. Um, the Gladiators uh, schedule for next week mm-hmm. pretty soft. Okay, pretty soft. Is it like Shanghai Dallas Fuel? It's Dallas Fuel for sure. Um, it's just Dallas terrible. Fuel twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be so bad. Who was the other team? Uh, no, it's Florida Mayhem. Okay, so, yeah. Florida's good, but uh, you yeah. get to play. Da- Dallas Fuel. They're still working. Wait, on no, it. no, no, no. I'm wrong. I was looking at the wrong week. They play Boston next week, so that's crazy. We'll get into that next week, though. Okay. Um, let's see. So we kick it off at Volskaya, uh, where we get to see who starts off the offense on this. Glad start off first. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Gladiators started off first. They take point one pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um. Shaz, dude, killing it at the beginning, getting some big picks, yeah. and uh, on top of F- Fisher. Fisher has got to be one of the best Winston's in the league, if not uh, the yeah, best. Yeah, he's top. If not the best. Yeah. I, think, I don't know. It's a hard. It's between, I'll say it's between him, Jester, Jester. and. Uh, hmm. It's crazy because Mono and Mecco, just a great combo. Yeah. But the whole team is so good that it's yeah. so hard to pick who's the best besides, obviously, Jonak. Let's let's be real. <laughs> Jonak is number three for best Winston. Dude, if not one of the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's just throw him in the, in the conversation. Have we seen Jonak on Winston? No, but he's, got, he's probably pretty it's good. He's probably at insane. It. Yeah. We've seen Shaz on Winston. Okay, that, 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 that's when you know. I think that's the one character he hasn't picked yet. <laughs> Winston, yeah. <laughs> he's probably telling. He's like. Fisher, dude, get off Winston. <laughs> Let me have Winston, bro. Yeah. And Fisher's, there's probably like a, a 
a communication <laughs> issue going on there. But yeah, I'm sure Shaz has been yelling he's at him. Trying this whole to, time. He's trying to find out how to say Winston in Korean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so uh, Glad's take it with like five minutes left over. Yeah. Um, and we comment here with a big time, you know, tied make like that. Houston does end up taking the point with like two or three minutes left. Yeah. But that two or three minutes um, difference is big, especially on 2CP. So. Yeah. And then we, you know, Shaz here, he he performed. Shaz is still good. We, we make fun of him all the time. But yeah. we love the guy. And he, This is a crazy stat, actually. Right? Yeah. He's, I'm glad so, you put this. Yeah, he's on average, he's charging his uh, transcendence 45 seconds faster than Rockus is. And yeah. he's doing 3,000 more damage throughout the match. Yeah. It's That's crazy insane. because on one of their defenses, um, and this is when their Houston's on their first offense, Shaz gets an ultimate uses it and before Houston has left the point or been wiped ha- it's at like 95 like, <laughs> what the fuck just happened uh, but if when they do pan over to him he yeah. is constantly applying so much damage that it does not surprise me that he gets his all yeah. the best yeah, yeah his crazy. play style is definitely more aggressive yeah um, but yeah that uh, Volskai goes to Los Angeles um, bringing us into New Mbani oh man this this was a fun map, man. Sure. <laughs> this was a fun map. You know what? Uh, oh, forgot to mention, Fact Fiction played map one like yes. he usually does for Houston on the 2CP. We get Muma back in. And we're finally uh, getting to see the difference, too. You know, I didn't yeah. cut you off. But we're, we're seeing the difference why Fact Fiction's on there and what, what role he plays. He's yeah. more of that, like we said, Gaguri style um, of Winston play where he cares about protecting people. Uh, where Muma is a selfish player, and <laughs> yeah. he's he he will he's more like a Janus, right? Like he's gonna get in there, he's gonna mess stuff up, and he's gonna try not to die for the kills. Yeah. He just wants to get them himself, yeah, uh, which he does a great job at. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, both the teams on Umbani do a really good job holding yeah. point one um, for more than a couple, you know, at least two minutes, which is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get to see Jake on the uh, somber to start off with with a Gladiator's offense. Uh, he kind of misses an EMP. I don't want to say he kind of misses. He misses <laughs> most of the gladiators with an EMP. Uh, and Asher kind of turns around, kills everybody on the Houston team. That's down there with him because I'm sure Jake is yelling, "Hey, I'm about to EMP everybody!" Mm-hmm. Everybody jumps down. Jake, you didn't EMP anybody. Where's oh, what? the ultimate? <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. talked about his somber and why he keeps playing it. Uh, yeah, so he needs to stop. <laughs> he yeah. needs to stop. I mean, Sombra is such a devastating character, especially on these maps where yeah. you can't get BMPs. But damn, if you miss everybody, yeah. it's embarrassing. So, yeah. and especially next, you know, next patch, it's not going to be as easy to charge up. So, yeah, it's going to be more important. Yeah. Um, the gladiators push it to point one and two. Uh, they kind of get halted at three, but we see Fisher switch over to an Orissa. Uh, once they switch on the Orissa, they never stop. So they they take all three. Yeah. Um, uh, we see the yeah. notorious attack Torb. You should have saw chat. Chat was losing. Oh, were they going wild? Well? This is for the memes, baby. This is why people love <laughs> They might not be winning every game, but so, dude, they're doing they're doing cool stuff. So on Twitter, Houston Houston's uh, account, they posted a picture of the resemblance between Jake and Junkrat. And it was pretty <laughs> close. It like looks like like the Joker. Like he's he's making yeah. this smug face that he usually makes and they have a yeah. They have a, a junk rat right next to it, and it looks pretty similar. Yeah. Um, just the cynicalness. And then, first comment is somebody posts a comparison pictures between Torb and Jake's face. Oh, no. And I was like, see, here we go. Now it starts. This is a, Don't play Torb on attack. That's the theme. Um, well, it's, it it's kind of worked. Crazy. It did kind of work, but it only worked, I think, because it's so distracting that you're like, oh, I just got to kill this yeah. torb. I got to kill this turret. Linkser gets like 100 kills. Exactly. Yeah. He's so. taking people out. And maybe yeah. that was the point. I don't know what the goal was. I don't know if it was for, for a show. I don't know if it was a yeah. PR stunt. But Linkser was able to get cleaner shots. I don't know. Whatever. I Maybe there's something there, right? But yeah. I don't think teams are exploring. I think... So this goes into a thought I had where I was like, you know, I'm kind of pissed he did it, whatever, because they lost that map. But I think that with next season, I think there's going to be enough time for players to explore certain avenues. Because right now it feels like the lines are drawn in the sand where this is what you play for hit this. This is what you play for this. This is yep. what you need on your roster. There's so much focus in the, the game moves or the weeks move so fast that there's not time to mess around with fun stuff. Like, yeah, it's more you about have your hydration. Perfect. Yeah. 
perfecting the right role. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. Yeah. There's not that room for exploration, but I'm hoping that with how things are going to shake up with the next patch, um, maybe yeah, maybe there'll be room for something crazy to happen and to break this whole meta. I don't want to break the meta completely, but I want to shake it up. Yeah, um, especially, I mean, think about it, you know, three or four years in the future, you got 50 heroes, you got, you know, 20 yeah. teams. That'll be a cool time. But, I mean, we have this now, and it's still cool now. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Especially we get to see Torb, man, first time. Yeah. Pretty yeah. stoked on it. Uh, but, yeah, Los Angeles take that one pretty dominantly. Yeah. Uh, I think they're never able to get around that bin on point three. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that brings us to Ilios, where uh, get some Houston subs. turns it around. Yeah, we get we do get subs. We get Clockwork in for Jake and Boink in for Bonnie. Yeah, Clockwork's far is a lot better than Jake's far, so yeah, it's worth it here. Yeah, I, I know he's been practicing it. He's obviously a good tracer too, man. He switched the tracer at some point during these maps, and uh, he does some work. Yeah, on ruins. Yeah, on Romans, yep. Um, let's see, what do we have going on here? Oh, Asher, I want to point out Asher does a, a ton of, a ton of work on map one, especially where he is on Rockus almost the entire yeah. entire map. But it, it's uh, crazy because, you know, based on the performance, the last, the first two maps, uh, Houston Outlaws pretty much take it handily here. Um, not that yeah. we're great on control. It's just a case where... You know, Linkser is going off. So we talked about how yeah. on Numbani throughout that, even though he lost that map, his widow was getting hot. He was getting in the mode. Yep. Um, and it shows it kind of fed over into this next map uh, because that's both. That's how they take both points. Is yep. you know they're having an issue with Share Four on Lighthouse. He switches the widow. Issue goes away. They're able to get it, and then we move into ruins, and he wins that battle, which is important yeah. on ruins. He definitely does win that battle, man. It's mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. So this is the turnaround. It's- you know, the turnaround to five. I hope. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. This is, I mean, I always want them to go to five, but as a Gladiators fan at this point, you know, in this point in the week, I want it to be over. Dude, I'm like <laughs> on the edge of my seat. I'm like, come on, guys. Just finish it here on this map. Uh, but yeah, we go to Route 66, uh, where we see the Gladiators take point one pretty quick. Um, but Houston just able to, to hold it down, yeah. hold it down in point two for a long time. Jake coming back in. Yeah, Jake was, does come back in for Route 66. And plays, you know, Tracer. And we talked about Clockwork was playing Tracer very well uh, yeah. on Ruins. But, yep. yeah, his sticks were hilarious. Like, they're, he's real good at hiding, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did a real – oh, that one point on where he sticks. Uh, who was on the Widow at that point? But uh, he's, sure for. Yeah, he's sitting there for, like, 30 seconds, hops yeah. behind sure for, sticks it right on him. Probably not the best target because he can get res right back up, and exactly. he did. But, dude, for the memes, I don't care. I think – I don't know if he's – you know what? I think that's what it is. It's pure PR. It's pure, like, hey, people love hey. to make fun of Jake. Let's, Let let's, let's Somebody bought that up. jersey that night. Not just the one. Somebody bought a bunch of Jake jerseys. <laughs> Multiple jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, Gladiators had a chance to win this map. Um, but, I don't know. They are just making small mistakes. Uh, Fisher was kind of doing this over aggressive thing he had going mm-hmm. on. Uh, he was trying to chase down Linkser, getting picked. I don't know. It was it was strange to watch, but yeah, Houston pretty dominant. There was a nice setup there um, on point two because you know, like you said, Gladiators weren't able to even get to point two. But yeah. what they did was they saved up their ultimates on the Houston. Oh, excuse me. I apologize for that. <laughs> they saved up their ultimates on the Houston side, and you had. Essentially, Muma and then Cool Matt cycle off. Muma was standing in front of the spawn, like that door you have to come out on the bridge or on the walkway. He was standing there ready to primal. He primals once they walk through. And once they get past Muma, Cool Matt put his Diva Bomb right at that exit and they just slide it on forward because they only yeah. needed a little bit to get there. That's, that's, that's good play. That's just that's what you want at that competitive level, right? Yeah, that was sweet. Everything doesn't have to be a huge breakdown fight. Where uh, Uber's losing his mind. <laughs> yeah, dude, that guy has to drink he's, so much coffee throughout dude, the. He's so good. He's yeah. you, you know he must practice his ass off. Oh no, joke, dude. He's coming up with like these crazy references. Oh on yeah, the fly, too. I'm pretty impressed. But yeah, especially so, not being American too. Like a lot of those references yeah. are not Australian-based yeah. references. Yeah, yeah, because no one would get those, man. Exactly, no one would get the Australian references. <laughs> it's Foster's. Sure. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't drink Fosters there, Ryan. Come on. Nobody drinks Fosters. <laughs> Not even over I there. Think, I think it's made in Milwaukee, too. It's actually an American beer. <laughs> yeah. So, Houston does tie it up. Yeah. It's two and two. We get into the map of the match. I think the only three notes I have for this whole map, I had had a couple beers at this point. I was a little nervous yeah. going into this last one. Uh, Shaz on Mora is one of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a I bought that skin, too. by the way, immediately. Yeah. Oh, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other note I had was Linkser uh, playing McCree, map three. Uh, he does get a, a sick dead eye, yeah. but literally nothing else, dude. He just dies He's, over and over. He's so, a target. He's a dive target. So we he, okay. So we've we've had the conversation about the Jonak effect. I think we talked about it last, and that's not ours. That's you know something that um, Monty talked about. And I wonder if there's now the Pine effect, right? Which is something that's also been mentioned, where you have these pitfalls of McCree for a lot of teams, where you know you don't want to play Widow, uh, but you kind of want that same effect uh, on the game. Yeah. And it happens a lot now, where you will see somebody get on McCree and just botch it. Because he's not yeah. in a great place right now, so yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if he fell into that pitfall, but you know, hydration. <laughs> so hydration comes in for the first time in the fifth match, which is something yeah. different. Hydration being a player that is known to be like can play anything to throw a team off. It's the yep. perfect use of him right now, and he subs in for sure for you know give him a break maybe whatever. Uh, but he plays his sombra and his sombra is really good. Yep. Uh, yeah, and it just gives people problems. And, you know, it's our map of the match, but I don't really have much notes because it's the one map where it's not skewed to any one team. It's kind of no. a battle there. Um, but, yeah, uh, Houston Not Laws can't finish games. We can't, we <laughs> I can't was going to say, it would have to go to the last map, you know, especially yeah. between these two. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it, it was it was crazy. So I have to – I'm not going to backtrack on what I said. So a couple episodes ago, or constantly, I'm saying that, hey – Stop making Jake play things he's not comfortable with. Just make him play his character on, especially gardens, right? Especially on this map. Um, and he does, and it doesn't make a difference. So that means I was wrong. Uh, that's not the problem. There's something else going on. Maybe it's because they put Boink in. <laughs> they left Bonnie in, which was different. And wow. I was like, maybe they just forgot, right? <laughs> but I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the problem is. He still plays the Junkrat on map three. And actually, he gets some picks and he does some yeah. damage. Um, but like we had mentioned before, when you play this McCree and Pine plays McCree, the team is almost molded around him on the McCree. Yeah. Where Linkser is kind of just thrown in there on the yeah. McCree, just never given really an opening. Um, and it's just dove over and over. They're playing two dive tanks. Yeah. They're playing a Junkrat and a, uh, a McCree. No one to dive with these tanks. And it was just a weird comp. Yeah, we're going into map three. Gladiators do a great job of jump or getting in the middle and splitting the teams off, and it's super yeah. super separate. Because gla- you know, Guardian or sorry, on Oasis Gardens, the Gardens variant of the the round is very difficult to stay together if you're not communicating. You're not kind of one. Uh, it's very easy to get split up because of how that map's designed. You can only run away in one or two directions. There's no there's no roundabout, right? Um, especially in that middle. So yeah, I don't know. Hey, there's something where we need to we need to wrap matches up better. Yeah, uh, it was definitely a hell of a match though, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely the one you would want to watch if you could watch one of these. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we wrap up the week in a lackaday or was it lackadaisical fashion? Yeah. Um, yeah. So Saturday we have our honorable mentions. We have Soul Dynasty versus New York Excelsior. New York taking it four zero, which based on how they were playing earlier this week. We know why Soul had a chi- had a issue there, yeah. Um, but yeah, then we had Dragon uh, Dragons versus the Fusion. Uh, Fusion taking it three two. They push him to a map five, which I don't. Has that happened yet? Uh, I don't think. No, I don't think the Dragons have ever taken it to a map five. Okay, but the Philadelphia in normal fashion always <laughs> take it to a fucking map because they like to wear it? themselves yeah. out. Hey, it's funny. I'm actually part of a Philadelphia Fusion fan group on Facebook. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> is freaking out. At this point, they're on map four. They're like, what the fuck? No, this can't be happening. <laughs> Not again. But it's funny because they didn't want Shanghai to lose. They just didn't yeah. want Philadelphia to lose. They're like, we want Shanghai to win, but shit, not this way. So it was yeah, cool. they have to be cool fuel. Too. That's how everybody wants them to win. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, 
confusion, you know, okay, so you know the workout technique where you just burn out, right? Usually at the end of your yeah. workouts, you burn out yeah. so your muscles get tired and they rebuild, whatever, whatever. I feel like that's how Phil W plays every game is they're always trying to burn out. The end. Yeah, they want all that camera time. They want a full two and a half hours, however long it takes you. Oh, but no, so then we have our honorable, our, our feature match, which is, yeah. you know, we thought it was going to be hot. hot shit. Yeah, yeah, we, and like a, me and Ryan picked these games, um, Generally, a couple days before, and we're like, "All right." Well, and my thought process picking these games is San Francisco. They won both their games last week. Yeah. They beat um, Fuel, or they beat the Fusion, like four zero or three one, something pretty crazy. Uh, so you know, I expect them coming into this week, you know, kind of be you know, in the same fashion. Obviously, not the case. Yeah, not the case at all. And yeah, yeah. Was rough. I, I don't. I don't get it. It's so okay. Let's we'll get into it. Yeah. Volskaya. Um, <laughs> the cool thing here is like Netflix gets a cool three K, and we see that. It's funny because these two games mimic mimic each other, right? So we have Volskaya and Nubani, and we're just gonna combine them. So what happens here is that uh, Spitfire able to get point one really quickly because they only need one tick. They yep. play great defense, and Shock have a real hard time. Uh, Getting any pressure, and all you really do have is that that Nevix bomb. That's pretty much yeah. it. Nothing else yeah. really happens. Oh, and you know, a big note here. So Architects on the team now, right? And that's interesting. And it, for me, it's interesting because they now have five DPS players on their team, <laughs> right? I I don't know why they think they need so many. Uh, I don't know what gaps they're trying to fill, considering the ones they have have been working well. That that rotation yep. of Sinatra, Dante, and ba- Baby Bay has been solid. Yeah, last uh, week it was great. Yeah, they've been crushing it, and now they throw Architect in the mix. And I I don't really know the background on Architect. Do you? Do you know his pedigree? Uh, or I know uh, mainly a Genji player. Um, did some hits can as well. Um, I mean, he's a great player. Uh, oh no, no, no. Not, yeah, by all means, not showing, not showing up this week. That's for sure. Oh yeah, definitely not, not showing up to the party. I don't think he knows where he's at yet. But it's it's one of those cases where this is a week. So we talk about capital. I art, I talk about capitalizing on you know a team situation. And Bird Ring's currently out still with a wrist injury, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I that was the first time I heard about it. I guess they might okay. have explained it in the last match. Yeah, they mentioned it. Yeah. Um, what was he doing? Bowling or something? I don't know. They they do love the bowl. So I've heard a lot of players in this league bowl in their off time which is okay. cool i mean yeah. i like bowling yeah uh, that's right but not when you're a professional overwatch player no. uh, you want me to keep those i'm a programmer and i keep my hands away from all dangerous things yeah absolutely. and i could probably use my toes if i needed to but i, I try <laughs> not to put myself in that situation yeah um that being said bird rings out you have horeg in and horeg i've never seen him play like this dude turned it around man dude, he's he playing, was insane yeah he's playing like he's on the starting roster and now you have somebody who's essentially taking a starting position in the play you know architect and he's not even playing at the level as somebody who plays who's a backup. Yeah, um, is playing. But all that being said, Volskaya is a pretty quick situation. They yeah. only need one tick. They get it. They take Volskaya. So yeah. then we move into New Bonnie. Yeah, and, I was gonna say yeah, the I'm only sorry. thing I had. You did mention the three K bomb. It was yeah. a three v six at that point. They still didn't take it. Yeah. All oh right. yeah. They start the fight. They start off the fight with the three K. Yo, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. And then Dude, Architect they, follows up with a blade that yeah, gets zero nothing. kills. Nothing. Yeah. All right. Noom Bonnie. Yeah. One to the next <laughs> one. Bo- All right. So right. Noom Bonnie. You would think this is the Outlaws how outrage. I, I I felt yeah. I was pissed after watching this match. Good thing yeah. it was the first match of that day. Yeah. Um, so you had two the two ones we mentioned to follow that up to make it exciting. Um Yeah, and then we get into this second map, so Noom Bonnie, and the only thing you have is like Fury has a three K here. Uh yeah. and it actually matters because it leads them to a full hold. They have a full yep. defensive hold, and yep. then they get one tick again because that's all they need. Like, yeah, that was kind of a shit show too. I mean, honestly, I mean, obviously London, the superior team on this uh, yeah. on this whole series, but man, that was almost a, kind of a mess. Yeah, uh, because they they don't get it until the last thirty seconds. Kind of crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. There, <laughs> we're moving along, and then we move into our control map, um, where usually San Francisco is really good at control maps. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, 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 they still have Architect in the game. Yep. And Sinatra comes in at this point, I think, for um, Dante, right? Dante. No, I think Sinat- no, Sinatra's in the whole time. Dante and Baby Bay don't come in. Uh, no, I no, no. Dante comes in at one point, right? He does? 
He comes in. Oh gosh, well he. Plays I was very mad while watching this, so you might yeah. be. You, I think you're right. I know he plays one, at least one map. Uh, I can't remember okay. which one. I was a little upset too. So. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, man, Architect's still in the game. This 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 now is becoming a coaching problem. I I don't. Architect's still in the game. So round one, lighthouse, they full hold it. Like Spitfire, don't they get it? They don't let it go. And that's it. It's ninety nine percent done. We move into ruins. And Horeg is just going off, and he wins the duel <laughs> against Architect. Like, wins it. Like, I think, like, 90% of the fights, yeah. he wins. Yeah, um, he pops off on map one, two, on uh, the McCree, and then turns it right around yep. on Widow and does the yep. same thing. Yeah, and I don't... Crazy. It's... That's very... I, I know Architect is still newer, fresher to the team, whatever. Maybe they took him to uh, In-N-Out. You never know. I <laughs> said, hey, man, this is your last chance. We're going to get this you a your hammer. last chance. <laughs> Um, no fries though. No fries. Yeah. Eat. Yeah. It's it's hard to see somebody come in, pretty much being propped up as people that are like, oh man, I can't wait to architect gets here. I can't wait to architect and play, and then yeah. you have somebody's backup show out like this. Yeah. Because um, Horeg is playing at the top of his game, and it's very demoralizing. I bet for fans um, to see this happen, and you can even I'm... see on stage where they San Francisco doesn't want to be there. Nobody's kind of speaking up. They all kind of look like. Nobody's really taking charge just because Baby Bay is that kind of leader guy, and he's not there. Um, he's not on stage. But anyways, we move into Route 66, which we I marked as map of the match, but none of these are map of the match. Uh, <laughs> I just had to pick one. And this is the one where something actually happens. Uh, so, yeah, I they, they end on a, on a low note. I don't know what the coaches are doing. I don't know what the plan is here. I don't know if it's trial by fire. I don't know if it, they're punishing the rest of the team <laughs> for playing well in all the previous games. Uh, but Jester just sits on Architect the whole game. Oh, it's so rough to watch too, man. The whole game. He waits for him to spawn. He shows his face and he jumps on him and sits on him. And there's even one clip where he comes in and towards the end of Primal, literally one swing left, Jester jumps over to Architect and bats him off the map. And then, oh, no. And the crowd dies laughing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Embarrassing. Um, and then they finish in classic fashion where they see nine the point. And get, during a short cap, and LS just kind of slide it in uh, for the 4 0. Yep, rough. Yeah, rough, especially because that we sound saw it. mean. Did I make that sound? That whole. I mean, it. It's bad. It, it, That's sound, bad. it sounded mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah. Feel good about, yeah. I just want to make sure it came off right. Yeah, it was kind of hard to tell while watching. I was like, well, I mean, I know San Francisco is a good team. They obviously performed very well last week. Or is London yeah. just overperforming? No, nah, I mean, London has been a good team throughout all these stages. Uh, struggling lately uh, a little bit more because, you know, obviously they lost a bird ring, not as much in the match. But they looked so good. You're like, damn, is London this good? Or is San Francisco just playing really poorly? <laughs> yeah. And they were playing really poorly. Really uh, poorly. And Sinatra, who I'm a big fan of his tracer play, not a lot of, you know, not putting in a lot of work um, in any of the maps he was playing it in. Yeah. And, and like you had mentioned before, Architect doing kind of the same thing. Uh, Gesture, I will say, excellent performance on the um, the Winston oh, yeah. every round he was in. Yeah. Uh, but not so much that he's, you know, crushing everybody. No. Uh, I think San Francisco was pretty much just crushing themselves. Yeah, and it's even a case where you look at you looked at the London Spitfire side, and they weren't getting hype because it was almost like they were being given the match. And it was it was very weird to watch. Um, the crowd was really subdued. All the players were really subdued because San Francisco wasn't responding to how poorly they were playing. They were just yeah. queuing up for the next match kind of thing. Well, it's just kind of irritating because we're getting into the last stage, yes. or last week of the yes. stage. Um, San Francisco, a contender mm-hmm. for being in the playoffs, um, and we'll get – We'll get into who the top four is at the end of this week, but they are right on the same neck as Philly. They're in there with Houston and Seoul, uh, and man, they just give up four maps. That's this is ridiculous. Yeah, it's big. Yeah, completely kills they, their differential. They actually have a better uh, win loss record than London right now. Yeah. Um, man, it just kind of didn't. Yeah, it didn't put up much of a competition at all. Super weird. Yeah. That's, but yeah, so that's yeah, that's sweet, man. That's a quick four zero. Uh, but yeah, let's real quick. Like I said, yeah. we'll get into the the standings for this fourth week in stage three. Ah, yeah, uh, okay. uh, Boston obviously undefeated, eight and zero for the stage. Crazy. Pretty insane. Yeah, doing really well. Um, 
New York, number two, Los Angeles Valiant, and Los Angeles Gladiators, three and four. Yeah, so. two Atlantic teams, two Pacific teams. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, too. Um, I, I didn't think about that until today because we are going to get into playoffs soon Yeah, where we will only get uh, three from each, right? Yes. Um, getting into the final playoffs, so yeah. that will make a big difference. Um, yeah, kind of crazy. Both Los Angeles teams up there. Obviously, New York going to be in every playoffs, every stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're so good. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so to wrap it up here, um, you know, we mentioned before, nobody kind of emailed us about the the gift card, man. We really wanted to give that away. But, you know, we'll hold out and we'll do it again later. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? I mean, we got it sitting around. So, But you guys can still reach us, you know, reach out. Kind of holler at us. You can find us at the Bird Watchers Podcast at gmail.com. It's a good way to just email us, reach us that way. Um, you can find us at on Twitter at the Bird Watchers. Watchers is spelled W A T C H three R S. Um, Facebook and YouTube at the Bird Watchers and Reddit and Instagram at the Bird Watchers Podcast. So yeah, that, that's this week. This week was kind of overall, it was good. Oh yeah, they're, they're all good. I mean, we haven't really had a bad week. Um, definitely opened my eyes up to shanghai and i want to see more of them yeah yeah especially going in the next couple weeks man they got some building to do but i i think they'll uh they'll come out on top one of these stages for sure yeah definitely man. cool but yeah so uh we'll see you next week guys for the last week in stage uh three bye guys all right see ya i have destroyed more of your kind than i can count <laughs>